Review of agendas for tonight's meeting. Uh, we have individual resolutions appointing redevelopment council, payment of bills, um, the overpayment of a, of a sewer issue, um, a award of an RCA for 1101 Summerfield Avenue, and a disposition of surplus properties and vehicles. Um, that's it for the resolutions. For ordinances, um, ordinance 2018 1 will recommend you to the table. Um, ordinance 2018-2 was a quote-unquote carryover from last year. Um, this one has been revised. We're going to provide you with the red line copies for your next meeting. And ordinance 2018-3 is the handicap parking that I just mentioned. Matters by the city manager. Uh, previously, you've been provided with the proposed 2018 um, capital improvement plan. Next year's capital improvement plan calls for approximately $4 million worth of items uh, with a, with a roughly $1.2 million worth of road repaving, specifically looking at reconstructing Bridge Street and having a couple dollars left over to uh, mill and pave some other streets like we did this year. Uh, this year's proposed road program how the, the capital program is done is I keep an Excel sheet of the next six years and any time a department says I need something I add it to the program throughout the course of the year um, so this year's program is accumulation of the last couple years as it's ongoing um, so this is what we're recommending again there's no budgetary constraints on this um, our net debt and the annual debt statement has gone down and it's still flat involving principal and interest within the budget so we've always been reinvesting um, our savings for improvements to the city. Uh, there are calls for the sunshade at Springwood Avenue Park, the police annual SUV replacement. Um, code enforcement needs a new vehicle. They've been getting hand-me-downs for the last six or seven years, and it's time that we start reinvesting in code. Um, the preemption system, which allows for the emergency responders to change lights from red to yellow, so that, that red to green, so that they can go through them along Maine, Asbury, um, Springwood, and Memorial. Uh, we've been working with the Department of Transportation for Main Street's aspect of it. Uh, that is the biggest lift for next year, but it's something that the county is paying, putting some money into also. Um, there's a proposed new Packer truck for DPW. The two trucks we have right now, one is 18, one's 21 years old, roughly. Hmm. Um, they've passed their useful life, and it's time that we start getting another one. We actually have a quote off of contract for that. The police department is looking for uh, a special law enforcement type of drone. Um, since we keep having more and more events, um, especially, I love that idea. especially mm -hmm. the Women's March, where we were blocks at a time, or the parades, this will allow us to have some overhead views. Um, there's also some state legislation that's been pending that won't allow drones to privately own drones to fly over events and only law enforcement. So obviously it's something that we've been watching. Um, building department, annual replacement of vehicles, um, the vehicle then drops down yeah. to another department. We're looking at security for administration for this building. Um, we've been working with the vendor recently to do um, the much needed security upgrades in, um, in this building. Um, general IT work of $35,000. Um, the public works, as we mentioned in the last year, was um, replacing traffic lights. There's about 20 lights that we can replace in the city, so we're going to try to replace one annually. Um, the personal protective gear from the fire department, this is the third year of their rolling program, just like the police department with their cars. We're looking at another ambulance in the fire department. Theirs is at the end of the useful life. Um, it needs to be replaced. Previously, from speaking to Kevin, what the city would do would be to try to hodgepodge all the equipment. Um, this year, we're, we're proposing actually doing it right, making sure that everything fits, it'll be spec'd out. Um, Kevin actually has provided a quote for that. Um, general plan, general equipment, carpets, um, stuff that we need in City Hall. And then the annual $35,000 worth of replacement of garbage cans throughout the city. We should be taking delivery of some of them sooner or later. Um, and then there's the cost of doing the capital ordinance. So we think the staff is recommending that we move forward, that the council move forward with this. The process would be an introduction, an introduced ordinance on the 24th. We would have to go to the local finance board um, in February or March, adopt
adoption in March, 20 days, stop will be able to start buying items in um, May or June, give or take. Uh, with the garbage truck being one of the more important ones, which is a three to six month lead time, but the vendor thinks it's closer to three months than the six months. He just likes everyone to be um, cautious of everything. So if there's any questions, any comments, concerns about this, this is the largest program that we've ever done, um, but it's budget neutral and we're, we're trying to upgrade some of the stuff that's been old in the past. Um, want to touch on one thing, if you remember, last year we did buy a, a large truck um, and DPW loved it in the snow. So we're seeing the improvements now that you know, the bigger equipment, the larger equipment, the newer equipment is actually going to be able to help us. So is there any questions so far, comments on this? No, can I get a hard copy of that? Yes, it's on the copier upstairs. Okay. <laughs> um, and another thing from me is the there was a change in the state legislation earlier this year involving code blue activities. The county is supposed to come up with a plan um, involving how to service at risk um, homeless individuals. The county has been working with Mr. Doug Schultz in social services and the OEM coordinator, Gary Congress Jr. It's supposed to be run through OEM. Um, Doug has been doing a lot of the work just as he is more attuned with that population and the needs. Um, and he's been here doing census and counts numerous nights. Um, what we found is many people who were here in City Hall actually had places to go and they weren't going there. Um, so we've been trying to escort them to places where they should be. Um, as Code Blue is now off, because tonight is warm, uh, we want to stress that City Hall is a last resort and that we're going to ask people now to really move. When it's nine degrees and zero degrees and they don't have a place to go, yes, we can live with the lobby, but it's not a party and not as a hangout. Thankfully, this time, during the last two or three weeks of cold weather, it didn't turn into a party zone like it had last year, where there was drugs and alcohol. We had to remove people. Um, everyone was well behaved, but the census that Doug was doing every night, 9 out of 11, 8 out of 11, 12 out of 15, people had other places they should have been. And were they Asbury Park? After we met with the county, yes. Um, what the county was actually doing was dropping them off here. And it was inadvertent because... How do you inadvertently yeah, drop people off here? <laughs> well, when they get out of that jail, they give them a sense. ticket to come here. What happened was... Still? Well, they still, yeah, do, still do that? What happened was the list of service providers, everyone was based in Asbury. Oh, so okay. that's why Doug was meeting with the county to actually help them write the plan because the continuum of care plan says it needs to be dispersed throughout the county. Right. And obviously law enforcement doesn't know the social services. No, no, by works for right. too. So that's where, you know, even law enforcement's like me. They, they actually reached out to me saying Doug was great to be at the meeting because we knew nothing they could talk about. So there was a definite disconnect. The legislation has some flaws in it. Um, county OEM, yes, it's nice that they should be running this, but they're not social service providers. And Doug has been teaching them the ways of, of that field. So Doug's been involved in every county meeting. Um, it's been a godsend for them. So Doug and I have been meeting almost daily on this because there is help. It's just people were lucky not to do it. They weren't going where they were supposed to be. Um, so Doug's been working very well with the police department and trying to, to get services. Um, but it is, the city hall, I want to stress, is a place of last resort. When it's zero degrees, yes, but if you have somewhere else to go, you should be in that other place seeking full services. So other than that, I don't know who would make it. <laughs> How that wouldn't be somebody's place of last resort, right? Especially when you see the census, the nine hall. people, and Doug said he would walk in and people would be like, hey, Doug's here. So it, it, it was, Doug, Doug was very frustrated a lot of the nights because he was like, I know you could be somewhere else, let's go. And the law actually allows the police to transport, which actually is against mm -hmm. attorney general guidelines. You're not supposed to transport people to and from places, but the law allows it. So we're trying to work now to get the law changed to be better because OEM is, it's good, but there needs to be some terms. <coughs> Matters by City Council? I have nothing. I just want to repeat that on Saturday, um, the city is doing a coat giveaway in the Transportation Center between the hours of 9 and 12. So anyone who is in need of coats or sweaters, both children and adults can come to the Transportation Center. And 
everything is free. Yesterday, uh, Daniel Weiss, Asbury Park resident, was sworn in as uh, mm -hmm. municipal judge, so congratulations to him. That's all I have. Nothing. Two quick things, and they're both uh, intertwined. On January 3rd, right before the snowstorm or during the snowstorm, the sewer bills were sent out. Now, everybody's going to call and say they didn't get them or the little tiny cardboard things, and we're going to get 100 complaints saying, I didn't get them. Well, they're due February 1st, and on the city's calendar, they're marked they're due February 1st, and that should be coming now, too. And we also have a problem, and before I said this problem, I got in touch with Congressman Pallone's office and asked him if it was okay. Asbury Park is having a terrible na uh, time with its mail service. And that's why I'm asked, I have a temporary service uh, delivery person. Uh, I didn't get mail for three days. When I got mail, I got my entire neighborhoods, uh, including two streets over. Uh, I ask a lot of people, again, they were dependent on social security checks, uh, whatever, pension checks and everything. The mail delivery is terrible. Uh, again, talking to Congressman Flown's office first and asked him if it was okay. If I asked anybody with any mail problems, please call his office. The response was yes, please call. We know at the city level we can't do anything. He's tried before in the past. The more complaints he gets, the better off it can be for the city, and we can get the mail out there. But again, everybody was sent a sewer bill on January 3rd. The due date is February 1st, so hopefully we'll get no complaints and they'll be paid on time. That's all I have. Matters by the city attorney? I have nothing at this time. At this time, we'll adjourn until 7 p.m. for the regular meeting. Okay. Thank you. Council? Councilmember Chapman? Here. Councilmember Clayton? Here. Councilmember Kendall? Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast, and the Star Ledger on January 4, 2018, and posted on bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the City Clerk. This time, I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please. Move it. Second. Anybody wishing to speak, please come up to the mic, state your name and address for the record. Each member has three minutes to speak. Hi, Rita Miranda, Wait Avenue. <clears throat> Number one, I'd like to know what happened to the alternate side of the street parking for the snow removal, which was awful. And number two, I'd like to know more about that arts committee that you, I think you gave, I'm not sure about this, but I think they're the ones that got the $10,000 to design something, paintings. I'd like to, you would, to explain that again, because I didn't hear it at any of the meetings, because your microphones don't really work that well. And um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was by the, the snow removal by the high school. For three days, there was not one car there, and they couldn't push the snow to the curb. I mean, like, the cars are parked on the other side of the snow piles. The, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there was no cars there. They should have had that clean. That's a main street, Sunset Avenue. And you got to go around cars and around snow. And that's it. <clears throat> oh, and the city manager didn't call me back, by the way. And that's all. Could you tell me why we didn't have alternate side of the street parking? 
I'll do the. I, I know you passed it. <laughs> Hello? We started with the alternate side of the street parking. Uh, today, people have started to receive tickets. Um, we don't want to have to tow people, so we've had the police. Um, we stopped giving tickets later in the day because our DPW couldn't get out to some of the spots. So parking, myself and police have had discussions of how to work that a little bit better because it wasn't working. The curb to curb aspect failed in some spots. Um, I don't know about the high school. I'll talk to DPW, but if we didn't push the snow, we should have pushed the snow up. Um, and the public art, uh, under professional services, the city awarded a contract to further public art. Um, one of the things the city has done, didn't do previously, was implement recommendations from the master plan. And one of the recommendations in the master plan is to further public art. So we, we had some money left in a budget line item. Um, we spoke to the people in the public art commi committee at the time, which is now a commission, and we wanted to further art within the city. <clears throat> Bradley's probably ten in his grave. First of all, have you read the headline today about pot? This used to be a family town. <clears throat> How does public art make it not a family town? What? She's talking about Bradley's marijuana. Oh, the marijuana. I'm sorry, Rita. I misunderstood what you said. Bradley's the one that built this town. No, well, I know that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's about it. I mean, like every other town, they get a phone call saying not to get your car off the street. I know Tank Falls, I have relatives there, I have relatives in my Malapin, everywhere. Get your car off the street when you're going to have a snowstorm. What's so hard about that? I got a car, I got a call from the senior center saying that there's not they're not going to be open okay rita well i'm just saying okay, it's so easy off. everything's hard here you're getting less and less people here must be winter watching on television hello mayor and council jerry scrano um and they tried hard to clean the street but it was pretty sad like on 8th Avenue you had cars on both sides of the street and the snow plow would come by every hour trying to pack the snow against the curb and he was filling in parking spots the people dug out and I felt kind of bad but it had the message been not to park on one side of the street whether it's the even side or the odds numbers the, you guys should make a big deal about that we had the same problem in long run now the other thing if we're going to be a dispensary uh, for marijuana are we gonna ha pick what location that a store could go up or will Main Street have the stores because <clears throat> I don't know whether you should have the dispensary mixed in with the retail and the restaurant part are you gonna have it on 4th Avenue where they used to have the methadone clinic or pick two spots and that's the only place you can sell it <coughs> I mean and then will the town be profiting on I mean, the property value will go up with that, where you give the location, sort of like a liquor license. And I don't know, are you guys gonna form a committee to figure out where's the best location to put the dispensaries? I mean, there's a lot of problems that could happen with it. I'm not sure how they do it in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, but in Colorado, they do have problems. So everything, I know a good way to kill a good idea is to do it by committee, but, <laughs> but I know, you, before you say go ahead with it, I was teasing Rita that it's a good way to bring tourists to town. Not where they only buy their pot, they'll have to buy, go to the restaurant and they'll pay parking meters. But she didn't think that was that funny. But <laughs> anyway, I think you have to have a committee on it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. And uh, we're, we're aware of there's no locations <coughs> under Asbury Park zoning or any city in the state of New Jersey zoning because this has not been passed by the state yet so once the state passes their laws the city will obviously we're not going to wait we've already talked to michelle alonzo and talked into like what zoning and everything right uh but once the state passes their laws then we'll have a better idea of which way we're going and we'll have to add it to like you know you can sell chickens ducks this 
Well, nobody in New Jersey says you can sell marijuana because it's been against the law. So every town is going to have to change that. So yes, we are aware of that. Are we looking to make money off of it right now the way it's being proposed? The only ones that can tax it would be the state. So no, we couldn't do like a separate tax on it unless the state changes the law. Until the state passes the law, we don't know what to do. So, but we are being prepared for it. Then we, why would we want to be stuck with the policing of the problem and not getting a fair compensation? Okay, good points. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, sure. yep, we are looking into it. Motion to close. Moving. Second. Second. We'll move on to minutes. We have five or four set of minutes this evening. Executive session minutes of December 27, 2017. Minutes for workshop for December 27, 2017. And regular session minutes of December 27, 2017. And the reorganization minutes of January 3, 2018. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Abstain. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. And Mayor Moore? Yes. We'll go on to individual resolutions. The first resolution is 2018-29, appointing redevelopment, Council McManaman and Scotland Bauman, LLC, and authorizing the execution of agreement for professional services associated therewith. Can I have a motion to approve the resolution, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yeah. Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-51, resolution approvement and payment of bills. Councilmember Chapman abstains from purchase order 17-02489. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-52, resolution authorizing refund due to overpayment of sewer for 1615 Park Avenue 4E. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-53, resolution approving award of contract for regional contribution agreement project for 1101 Summerfield Avenue. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-54, resolution approving disposition of surplus property for vehicles. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to ordinances for introduction. Ordinance 2018-1, I believe, is going to be tabled. Can I have a motion to table, please? Move to table. Second. <coughs> Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018 2, an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park authorizing the removal of three on street parking spaces located on Bangs Avenue and Bond Street in connection with the development of the property located at 700 Bangs Avenue, Block 2508, Lot 2. I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Public hearing is scheduled for February 14, 2018. Ordinance 2018-3, an ordinance establishing a restricted parking space for use by handicapped persons at property located 400 Deal Lake Drive in the City of Asbury Park and amending and supplementing Section 7-36 entitled Handicapped Parking of Chapter 7 Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Council, Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for February 14, 2018.
There being no other business, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move it. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Yeah, All and seven. just so everyone knows, the new city calendars are out, so um, you should be getting them in the mail, or you could pick them up, I think, at City Hall. Or the library. Or the library. Yes. All the WS address. Oh, okay. So we have a lot of...